All right. Hello. This is Justin William Savoy. And um, what I want to look at today um, is Raising Them Right, A Saint's Advice on Raising Children by Theophon the Recluse. Text translated from the Russian by Haramunk, Seraphim Rose. Forward by Peter Gilliquist. <clears throat> this is Conciliar Press, Bin Lamond, California. So my children are with their grandparents right now. Three of my small, I have five sons and three of my younger sons are with their grandparents on a walk. So we'll just try to go through this really quick before they come back. When they're here, it's almost impossible to make um, videos. Sometimes uh, it just depends on what's going on. But I thought since they're over here, what a appropriate time to go over this work with you. Um, just briefly. So forward, page one. Life of St. Theophon the Recluse, page 3. The Christian Adult, page 7. Chapter 2, Baptism, the Adult and the Child, page 17. Chapter 3, The Developing Child, page 29. Chapter 4, Forming Attitudes, page 41. Chapter 5, The Years of Youth, page 47. Chapter 6, Understanding a Young Person, page 53. Chapter 7, Preserving God's Grace, Page 67. <clears throat> Forward by Father Peter Gilliquist, Santa Barbara, California. Every so rarely you come upon a book from the past, decades old, centuries old, or even sometimes from the pre-Christian era, that you sense is timeless. Though seasoned by age, its message seems more up-to-date than this morning's paper. Proverbs from the Old Testament would be such a book. So, too, the Ladder of Divine Ascent from the 6th century, written by St. John Climacus. More modernly, many of the writings of C.S. Lewis seem to carry a similar sense of universal permanence. Now, I feel we have found another. Many years ago, a monk named Theophon, who we know best by his writings on prayer, the spiritual warfare, wrote a classic book entitled The Path to Salvation. This book is a summation of St. Theophon's teachings on spirituality and Christian development, and it includes some incredible material on how to raise children to be followers of our Lord Jesus Christ and keepers of the flame within his holy church. Through the efforts of Lawrence Williams, the translation of this portion of The Path to Salvation was published in book form in the early 1980s. Recently, Mr. Williams came to Conciliar Press and made the volume available for updating and republication. We have since added our own chapter breaks, subheads, and introductory material and have entitled the work Raising Them Right. Two things struck me as I read this material. First, this is a classic Orthodox wisdom and instruction on how to raise children for Christ. Secondly, I'm not sure that we can answer this how can a monastic recluse know much about families and children? I believe ra raising them right is a prophetic is prophetic for our time. Its message is fresh and a breath of hope and promise for parents and pastors alike. May it be used to shape countless thousands of children and us adults more fully into the image and likeness of God. Father Peter Gilliquist, Santa Barbara, California. So something I know about this book is it definitely... Um, is uh, here's the um, life of Theophon the recluse, um, chapter one, the Christian adult. So it, it um, has a lot of advice that is just applicable to the spiritual life um, in general, um, not just in pertaining to children. As you read through it, you will see that it's just as applicable to yourself as um, to um, children. So that's the real awesome thing about reading this. Um, Let's just look at the life of St. Theophon the Recluse, and then I'm going to let you go as I just intend to keep this video short and get back to attending to um, raising my children to the glory of God. All right, thank you. And here we go. The life of St. Theophon the Recluse. Theophon the Recluse, 1850 through 94, was born at Ch Chernovask near Orlov, the central Russian province of Vait Vaitka. He, his given name was George Vasilievich Gavarov, and his father was a parish priest. His mother was kindly and devout, and after attending clerical school, he was sent to seminary to be trained for the priesthood. He was a brilliant student, finishing at the top of his class. Even at this period of his life, his teachers described him as disposed and to solitude, gentle and silent. 
After seminary, he studied for four years at the Theological Academy of Kiev. Here he visited the caves of the Kiev Pekursk Lavra, the cradle of Russian monasticism, and gained lasting impressions of the monastic life. After graduation from academy, Theophon took monastic vows and was ordained to the priesthood. His great academic skills caused him to advance rapidly. First, in 1841, he became headmaster of the Kiev Theological School. Later, he became professor in St. Petersburg Ecclesiastical Academy. Finally, he was made rector of Olenets Seminary in 1855 and of St. Petersburg Academy in 1857. In 1847, Theophon was sent to serve for seven years in Palestine, Constantinople, and Near East as a member of the Orthodox Mission in the Holy Land. During this time, he learned Greek, and, the, and through reading the many spiritual books he found in the Near East libraries, he became better acquainted with the Fathers. The latter writings of Theophon draw heavily from this patristic background. On June 1, 1859, Theophon was consecrated bishop. He served four years in the See of Tambov and then was transferred to the Diocese of Vladimir. Two years after his own consecration, St. Theophon of Zadonsk was canonized. For, for, from his childhood, Bishop Theophon had held a special love for St. Theophon, and from this time on, he consciously and zealously began to imitate St. Theophon's example of asceticism. Although a kindly bishop and good administrator and a strong preacher, Bishop Theophon grew increasingly weary of public office. He longed to lead a life of prayer and seclusion. In 1866, after preaching his final message to an enormous crowd at the Cathedral of Vladimir, retired to a remote monastery hidden in the great forest of Vashen. Here he was to remain in seclusion until his death 28 years later. Theophon was appointed abbot of the monastery and for the first six years of his life there took an active part of the monastic services beginning in 1872. However, Theophon became a recluse. He remained strictly secluded, never going outside his cell. Seeing no one but his confessor and his superior of the monastery, his was the life of complete solitude. As a recluse for the rest of his life, Theophon devoted himself to prayer and to asceticism, to correspondence and to literary work. His personal discipline was astounding. His daily diet consisted of nothing more than the barest essentials, tea, a few pieces of bread, and during non-fast periods, a bit of milk and one or two eggs, just enough to keep his health. His cell had two barely furnished rooms, including a small domestic chapel, with just the basic necessary liturgical items. During the latter year of his life, he celebrated the Divine Liturgy daily in his own chapel by himself without a server. He continually prayed the Jesus Prayer and constantly strove to perfect in himself the practice of the prayer of the mind in the heart. In addition to his own ascetical labors, he spent hours every day corresponding with people from all over Russia. He received from 20 to 40 letters per day and faithfully answered them all. Though he never met face to face with the people from whom he corresponded, he gave insightful direction to his spiritual children through his letters. He also gained from them an understanding of contemporary problems otherwise denied to him by his secluded lifestyle. His insight to contemporary situations in life was prophetic in nature. Mostly of this correspondence has been saved and compiled and partly published in the ten volumes. The wonderful spiritual anthology, The Art of Prayer, draws heavily from his correspondence. Theophon brought with him into his seclusion a library of spiritual literature. The Art of Prayer, an Orthodox anthology compiled by Agumen Cheritan of Valamo, translated by E. Kadlubovsky and E. M. Palmer, edited with an introduction by Timothy Ware, London, Faber and Faber, 1966. And I have a review um, of that. So Theophon brought with him into his, conclusion, his seclusion a uh, spiritual literature ranging from the early fathers to contemporary theology and philosophy. The thoughts and spirit of his fathers filled his counsels and writings. He spent much of the time translating various spiritual works into Russian to make them accessible to the Russian people. Not only a translator, he wrote many ascetical works of his own. Especially important are his teachings on the use of the Jesus prayer and prayer of the heart. He wrote theological and catechal materials on simple basic level that he would that would be understandable to the less educated. He also wrote commentaries on the epistles of St. Paul. For years, the faithful, the faithful of Russia and others around the world, as his written works became known, 
have recognized in Theophon a truly spirit-filled man and guiding light in the area of personal spirituality. Just recently, however, he has been officially recognized for his sanctity of life and given place in the special honor in the church. In an official act of the local council of the Russian Orthodox Church of June 6, 1988, Bishop Theophon the Recluse, along with eight other Russian Orthodox faithful, were officially canonized. May Saint Theophon's life be an example to us all. <clears throat> So uh, that is uh, just a real short look at raising them right, uh, saints' advice on raising children. And like I said, all these topics um, actually can help you um, developing a spiritual life. So even if you don't have children, you can greatly benefit from this. And then from this wise saints' advice, you can learn um, better techniques of raising and nurturing um, um, Christian children um, with a heart for God. Um, so, and a lot of this, what I really, really like and enjoy about it is that it um, goes against like so much of the modern current of things that are being taught. They're just um, wicked and um, wrong in this world and encourages um, love for God. So uh, glory be to God for that. And I hope that you enjoyed this very short look at Raising Them Right. Uh, Saints Advice by um, on Raising Children by Theophon the Recluse. I am Justin William Savoy, and uh, I just thank you for joining me and uh, hope that you will take a look and um, learn from the life of Saint Theophon. And um, yeah, so I'm going to get back to uh, parenting my three younger sons and just enjoying the day here. Um, December uh, 2020, it's clear outside, but uh, still cold as I live in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, if you enjoy this um, work that I am doing here, consider uh, supporting me. If you'd like to get feedback or talk or correspond with me, you can always reach me at SavoyJustin123 at gmail.com. That's S-U-V-O-Y-J-U-S-T-I-N-123 at gmail.com. Thank you so much. All right.